Our next two speakers I'd like to introduce, and I'm going to introduce them together, and they're going to kind of hand it off. Uh, but first, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Joe Holden. And Joe is founder and CEO of ZVIRC, which is the Regional Economic Development Organization established in 1988 uh, to support profitable growth of small and medium-sized manufacturing companies in southeastern Pennsylvania. ZVIRC is our uh, Philadelphia-based NIST MEP affiliate. Um, and I've known Joe for years. He is an advocate for manufacturing, and we're well, thankful to have him. Uh, joining Joe, we have Nick Hackett. Uh, Nick is president of the New Way Air Bearings, the market leader in the modular air bearing products, and the recognized provider of integrated uh, porous media air bearing solutions. Uh, it's a mouthful. But he joined New Way Air Bearings in 2002 and serves on its board of directors as well. Uh, Nick brings 25 years of experience covering strategic corporate management, business unit operations, marketing, and financial management to the organization. He has held several management and leadership positions in both small businesses and large corporate environments. Um, Nick also serves as a vice chairman of the Board of Pennsylvania for Manufacturing Extension Partnership, which is a state-based center. ZVIRC is a subrecipient of that. Um, he previously served on the small business Board of the Greater Philadelphia Chamber of Commerce for 2008 to 2011, and the Board of Directors for the Delaware Valley, in Delaware Valley Industrial Resource Center, or DVIRC, from 2012 to 2016. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Joe and Nick, and they're going to do a dance here in their presentation. Well, as, um, as Randall presented, the MEP, the MEP program is incredibly successful. And it's something I've been involved with, as a first of all, as a client about 10 years ago with the business, and then um, was so interested in what the, the group was doing, uh, joined the board a couple of years after that, and now um, honored to be the vice chairman of the PA MEP uh, committee that's just been formed. So I see both sides of it, but I'm here today to talk about our experience as a client mainly in terms of how MEP has helped us as a business uh, benefit. So uh, New Way Air Bearings, media air bearings. If you think about air hockey, you've all seen air hockey with the, the air hockey puck floating around on a film of air. That is an air bearing. So you have something that's supported by a, a little film of air. We take that whole idea and we manufacture components that actually look like the air hockey puck, but we create the air film on the surface of the puck instead of on the table itself. And we do that, our proprietary um, differentiator is we do that through a porous material. Instead of having it, the air come through holes to create the air film, we have a porous material. So it looks like a flat surface if you look at the, the bottom of the puck, but the air actually comes through the whole surface and we create a very um, well-controlled and pre precision air film under there. What that allows us to do is sell those components into the OEM world, into people that build precision machines or high-speed machines, things like um, processing equipment in the semiconductor industry, we are in a Philips Medical's high-end CT scanner, their bearing system. We're involved with various uh, test equipment um, OEM. We are involved with uh, treadmills, well, basically treadmills for Formula One racing cars, which allows them to run in a wind tunnel at full speed on a road that's running at full speed also, and the whole, the whole treadmill runs on a bed of our air bearings. And most recently, We've been involved with the, uh, the manufacture of flat panel display and uh, tablet displays. And we actually have gone to the, if we, if we use the air hockey analogy, we've gone to the air hockey table approach. We create tables of vacuum and air pressure, which allows the manufacturers to float those sheets of glass, which start very large. They start about 10 foot by 10 foot. And they process, uh, they produce the screens on that glass, floating them on our films of air. And then they carve them up into the screens that you see either as TVs or tablets or iPhones. So we've, we've really enjoyed being a part of that. Our company has gone from, since I joined in 2002, basically in the period from 2003 to 2008, we enjoyed turning from a uh, kind of a startup operation with a few early adopter customers to an established ISO 9001 registered um, up and you know, significant manufacturing business in, the, in, the, in Delaware County. Uh, our growth was, a, we ran at about 30% per year annual growth up through 2008. And it was in that period that we got involved with DVIRC, recognizing that we needed to invest technology into the business 
into the manufacturing and the planning. So we use them to, to help us uh, implement an MRP system and also to start in, in implementing and training for a full lean program that we would apply throughout the company. A lot of that helped us with what was actually one of our biggest successes, which was surviving 2009. And uh, we woke up January 1st of 2009 with practically zero order book. We finished 2009 60% down from 2008. A lot of our ability to survive that was due to the things that we put in place uh, through what we'd learned with the processes and the, uh, the lean uh, approach to manufacturing that we'd learned from MEP. Since then, we've uh, continued to rebound and grow again, and we've continued to make investment. We have uh, recently, as, as recently as the end of last year, we invested the, uh, basically our entire net margin, net profit for the year into new capital equipment, new CNC machine tools, to enable us to be competitive in the marketplace. And that's one of the uh, Im important aspects of this, is that small businesses need to be aware of what the what's happening in the marketplace, and they need to know how to react to that so they can stay competitive. In our example with the uh, flat panel TV handling, we were the uh, sole supplier for an Israeli company that made, uh, currently still makes optical inspection equipment for flat panel TV screens. We were their sole supplier, and we ended up, because of their continued drive for lowering cost and price, we ended up finally being squeezed out of that market. Through last year's um, in integration of lean manufacturing, investment in these new CNC machine tools, which allowed us to reduce our costs significantly, we've now come back to be their sole supplier again. <coughs> That's been a success for the business. We've just, uh, this coming Monday, we'll add our first permanent second shift. So it's been a very uh, good success story. And just as the uh, associated benefits that Randall mentioned, not only are we employing more people, but we have a, a supply chain that is providing, you know, is, is working at a higher level. So the benefits go through us, through our employees, through the supply chain, and all the surrounding uh, entities and businesses that support New Way in Aston. I wanted to uh, talk about a little bit about the uh, what is it that SMEs, you know, small medium enterprise uh, enterprises, what do they look for, or what are they going to use as benefit from a program like MEP? And typically an SME, is the, the leaders of SME, typically founders, they're very interested in the company. They're very interested in growing the company and protecting uh, their products, growing their products, growing their people. And they're very interested in doing the right thing for the business. One of the things they need to be aware of, though, is what's happening in the outside world. What are the impacts coming in? What are the new technologies that might displace them? Uh, what's happening in the marketplace? Uh, but the SME typical leader is spending so much time working on his business, or he might have a big uh, not invented here syndrome of like, I know everything. Um, what's needed is a, an organization or at least an, uh, an access to that information. And that's where I see MEP providing uh, a lot of that input, especially in a, as we look at the new advanced manufacturing technology initiatives coming through. It's, uh, I think it's beholden upon the MEP through the centers for them to become the the center experts in that area, so they can reach out to the small companies, let them know what's going on, let them know what is going to actually apply to their business and how they can actually implement it in their business. Um, I think the last thing I just wanted to say about what uh, small businesses uh, look for in terms of you know, help from the government, and actually I remember the first time DVRC came to the, uh, the offices, they said, uh, hi, we're from the government and we're here to help you, and we were like, okay. But uh, in addition to all the things we talked about with MEP, um, I've been involved in lots and lots of surveys. Uh, Joe knows that I'm a big anti-survey guy because they, they always seem to ask, ask the same questions. Uh, the two biggest things for small businesses are taxes and regulations. And that sounds very cliche and we hear it all the time, but it's, it's true. If we look at lean as being something a manufacturing business wants to do to improve its operations, lean is something you want to have as a business environment. You know, lean is about eliminating waste and taxes and regulations are, create a lot of waste for a business. It's a lot of money that's spent not producing the product and not growing the business. So that would be my, my pitch here to those who would maybe be in those conversations going forward. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, Joe Holden from uh, the Philadelphia area. 
Uh, we, as you may, you heard in Carrie's uh, introduction, we are the affiliate of the Pennsylvania MEP in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I, I am here today um, and happy to hear what uh, Nick had to say. Um, but I was, uh, I'm here today to talk a little bit about the a project we were just beginning to work on that has been supported by the Department of Defense, and it relates back to something else Carrie said, which has to do with advanced manufacturing technology. So uh, we are at the very beginning, and actually have not officially started yet, but we are at, at the very beginning of uh, reaching out to and working with some of the manufacturing institutes that have been invested in by both the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy and most recently NIST itself. Uh, we're doing that because the marketplace that is the market we serve may not have been ready for advanced manufacturing technology in the 1980s as was originally envisioned, but um, we're very confident that that's not the case today. Things are very, very different in the small to mid-sized manufacturing world today than they were in the late 80s. We, the project that I am talking about is just one example of multiple approaches that are being worked on to bring together what the MEPs are good at, funded by the U.S. Department of Commerce, with what other agencies are very good at and have as missions. So that would be the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy. The MEP itself is also pushing centers like ours throughout the country to engage much more in this kind of work. Um, and a good example of that is a program that is called the NIST MEP Embed Program that is uh, work asking, actually MEPs compete to be part of this program. And those that win are win, win and are challenged with having an individual from an MEP actually locate it within one of these manufacturing institutes and kind of be the, the uh, lead or the pioneer from the MEP side, uh, learning, uh, understanding, thinking about how this connects, quote, back home with the small to mid-sized manufacturing companies, and actually being uh, then brought back into the MEP itself and become part of a little, uh, an, what will eventually be an army of people that are much more aware of and tuned into the advanced manufacturing technology issues that are important to the institutes and their agency funders, but coincidentally are also very important to uh, the small to mid-sized manufacturing world. Uh, our assessment so far is the institutes are very different uh, from what have been long existing um, uh, agency supported research centers or what is sometimes called national labs. Um, the, inst the institutes are different in that they are starting off in immediately with a focus on commercialization, meaning impact on the commercial marketplace. Uh, the labs have a primary mission which is not commercialization. Commercialization does occur, but their primary mission is to meet the need of that agency as defined by Congress. Um, in this case, commercialization is the primary objective. That makes it very different. And uh, I think potentially very positive in terms of a collaboration between an MEP and an IRC, uh, or a MEP and an institute, I should say. Um, the embed project that we're involved in is being led by another one of the ME, uh, Pennsylvania affiliates, which is Catalyst Connection from Pittsburgh. Petra Mitchell's here today representing them. Um, and what we are going to try to do over the next year, hopefully two or three years, is um, work 
closely with the institutes on the notion that a great way for them to have a large impact on a large marketplace of manufacturing companies is to actually establish satellite facilities in that marketplace. That's the concept. Now, uh, and that's what DOD is paying us, in a sense, to work up the concept and see if there's an economic justification for doing something like that. In the world of small to mid-sized manufacturing company, there is there's, it's very challenging for them to travel all over the country to visit institutes. Institutes are where they are for very good reasons, uh, but for a small to mid-sized manufacturing company to get to them is a bit of a challenge. So uh, this is a, you could think of it as a pilot program that uh, involves in year one, uh, uh, a lot of conversation, discussion that turns into a plan. That how would it work if there, if a few institutes decided to collaborate on having a satellite facility co-located with other institutes? How would that work? And how would that actually really help the mission of the institute itself, uh, as well as how would it really impact a region in terms of making it lots more, lots, um, more easy for small to mid-sized companies to tap into uh, on the one side and on the other side, uh, educational institutions and workforce development organizations to tap into. Because the institutes are not just about the technology, they're, they're also working on the curriculum and the certification programs needed for the people who will know how to use the technology. Uh, I can't overstate the importance of that part of it because one of the constraints that companies have even today when looking at, let's just use the one most are familiar with, which is additive manufacturing or 3D printing. Um, one of the big issues that companies have in addition to the cost, in addition to the cost is who's going to run the machine? Who's going to maintain the machine? Um, so there are, we're at a point where I think there's going to be a much more holistic approach taken to what the needs of a company are, uh, especially when you're trying to address what needs to be dealt with in order for a company to invest in a new technology. So um, that's what we are at just at the beginning of. Uh, by next spring, um, we will either have a plan that says we think there's a rational justification for doing this, or we will have something that says this was a crazy idea that um, needs to go the way of other crazy ideas. Uh, uh, I don't think that's what we're going to end up with, but that's certainly a possibility. Thank you very much. <clears throat>